Welcome everyone to North Stonington's town meeting. Thank you all for taking time out of your busy schedules to be here tonight. We're going to get the meeting underway. Uh, just to give a brief uh, introduction as to why we're here. Um, as you know, back in May of 2016, we passed our school project and very recently a petition came in in order to look at whether or not we should continue that project. A lot of information will be shared with you tonight in a very efficient and timed manner so that we can be respectful of everyone's time tonight. Um, so w the first thing uh, we ought to do is elect a moderator. So do I hear any motion for a moderator? Lisa. We have a nomination for Bill Ricker. Do I hear a second? Second from Nick. Any, fur uh, any further nominations of moderators? Hearing none, I would, clo I would uh, ask for a motion to close nominations for moderators. Second. Uh, mo motion is now closed. Bill Ricker, uh, you are our moderator. Bill, if you could come up. As Bill is walking up, we, uh, we have everything pretty well organized tonight to try to keep timing in place so that we're, again, efficient with time. Uh, what we will do first off is give a brief overview from the school modernization chairwoman, Pam Patemri. So she'll give us an overview, and then what we'll go, do is go into our timed presentations, and we'll announce them one at a time. So Pam is first, uh, Pam will be first up, but uh, we probably should have a motion to introduce the question. I'll read the call. We should read the call. And Antoinette, our town clerk, will read the call. Notice of special town meeting, February 1st, 2018. A special town meeting of the electors and citizens qualified to vote in town meetings of the town of North Stonington, Connecticut, will be held on the date indicated at the time and location noted below for the following purposes. Location, Miller Gymatorium. Date, February 1st, 2018. Time, 7 o'clock p.m. Result, that the town of North Stonington continue with the construction of a new Wheeler Middle High School addition and renovations to the gymatorium, and addition and renovations to North Stonington Elementary School, demolition of portions of the existing Wheeler Middle and High School, and other improvements to be used for the North Stonington Board of Education Central Office, and issue bonds or notes and temporary notes to finance the portion of such appropriation not defrayed from grants. Dated at North Stonington, Connecticut, this 23rd day of January, 2018. Do I hear a motion and a second to uh, move the call? Motion made and seconded to move the call. All in favor, raise your hand please. All opposed. The ayes have it. I'm not here to answer questions, legal or otherwise, but to remain impartial and to move this meeting forward. Robert's rules of order will be generally followed since I'm no expert on it. During the discussion, Pam Patemri will give a project overview. Following, I'll ask all presenters to limit their presentation to three minutes. As this town meeting was called by two petitions, I will ask those petitioners to present first. I'll then ask other presenters to follow, also limiting them to three minutes. Dan Spring, Chair of the Board of Finance, Douglas Gillette, the Bond Council, Peter Nero, your superintendent, Christine Wagner, your Board of Ed Chair, and First Selectman Ergo. 
I will then call the order of the speakers from the floor. Come to the center microphone, state your name and address. Due to the number of residents here tonight, I would like to limit your comment or question to one minute. I am going to allow two minutes asking you to try to limit it to one. There are a number of kids here, older folks, like myself, who would like to leave, and I'm going to set a time limit of 8.30 to wrap this up. I will remind speakers that come forward when they are reaching their time, and I ask the speakers to speak on topic. First time speakers will be allowed to speak first, and if you have an additional question, you will hold that question until everyone has had a chance to speak one time. You will not be allowed to yield your time to another. There will be no vote tonight. I'll call to move the question to a referendum no later than 8.30. Hearing no objection to these rules for our meeting, we'll move forward. I want to make a statement before we move forward. There's a climate recently which empowers intolerance of our neighbors' ideas or opinions which conflict with ours. Can we please separate ourselves from such discord and remain true to our nation's foundations. Recognize the importance of differing opinions in discharging our civic responsibilities. It is acceptable to respectfully disagree. Please turn off any cell phone or pages. Can I defer, please, to Pam Potemri? Yep. Take the mic. You're on. OK. Good evening, everyone. Thank you so much for coming out. Before we begin, what I'd like to do is just ask the members of the School Modernization Building Committee to please stand and be recognized for all their hard work and countless hours that we put into this project. Please stand if you're on our committee. Thank you. I think that's important to recognize, and I also think it's important to recognize that this is a very exciting time for our town. So although there may be differing opinions that you know, we respectfully agree to disagree, I do want to say that I'm very excited for the town of North Stonington and definitely to represent this project and overview that I'm going to share with you. So I'm going to go through the project just to, for those of you who don't know what the process was, we do have some renditions of the buildings, and I will share with you exactly what we went through and how we got to the point that we're at, um, which we did come in under budget, and I'm very happy to report that. And with no further ado, can you hear me okay? No, you can't hear? You want me to use the mic? Sure. Can everybody hear me okay better now? Okay, thank you. 
So we initially looked at this project in a couple of different phases. We had to go through looking at what the scope of the work was. As you're mostly familiar with, um, we had a new middle school, high school um, addition that we were going to add on to the gymatorium and renovate the gymatorium. We were going to add on or, and renovate the elementary school, as well as relocate the central office over to the other side of Route 2 and also to do a roof replacement on that building. And we were looking at the dem demolition of the old middle school wing of the middle school high school that's currently in existence. We had a total um, budget project or project budget of $38.55 million that was approved in the last referendum that was passed. Um, the projected state reimbursement for our project was $15.06 million, which left the total cost to the town of North Stonington at $23.49 million. So that's after the renovation, the reimbursement, that was going to be the total cost to the town. From day one of the project, we looked at every possible option to ensure that we were reducing the cost, keeping within budget, because the voters made it very clear that it was important that we stayed within the budget and what was approved in the referendum vote. We also wanted to look at what the vision of the district was as far as education, looking at globalization of skills and working competitively in the job market. And we looked at how do we look at the cost drivers. So what was going to rise the co the raise the level of cost to the project, um, and how do we incorporate design changes so we weren't compromising what the vision was for the project um, from the proposed plan. We had originally looked at, and some of you may have seen an L-shaped building, an L-shaped wing to the middle school high school that we were going to add, um, and we looked at a couple of different things, looking at the utilities that were going to be involved in relocating them and upgrading them to the gymatorium. I know it was important for the teachers and for the staff to really have a campus feel so that the buildings were connected elementary to middle high school, um, and certainly to maintain equivalent space. At the elementary school, we were looking to completely um, remove the interior walls. There was a lot of remediation that we needed to do at the elementary school as well. Um, and we needed to look at the layout of the building just to make sure we were really in tune with the direction education is going in the 21st century. So this was the, um, what we settled on as far as where we were going with what the project was going to look at, look like. You have the existing gymatorium here, the proposed addition of the middle school, high school, and the elementary school um, renovated, and there's an addition right here of the, um, to the elementary school. On the other side of Route 2, naturally, is the Board of Ed building. Um, so when we were going through this process, as with any building project, there are a lot of unanticipated costs and things that you discover as you're going through the process, which we did. Some good, some not so good. So we definitely um, did well with our interest rate. So we were able to lock in our interest rate at 2.75%, which we thought was very positive. We looked at um, applying for a space waiver, so a standard space waiver, which basically brings the cost down to the town, which we were approved for. We were looking, uh, working with DEEP, we discovered that we could not incorporate the current septic system, so that was something that we weren't anticipating we were gonna have to build as new, but we ended up having to do that. And we were looking also at the additional abatement issues that we have at the elementary school, which if you're an elementary parent, I'm sure you're very well aware of some of the relocation of classrooms and some of the costs that are going to be incurred as a result of that. When you look at removing the waste, there's an increased cost in transportation because some of the materials have to be sent either across state lines or to certain landfills. So there's an additional cost associated with that. Um, and we also were looking at changing our USDA requirements. When we went with USDA for our funding, they required us to go with a construction manager at risk, which we didn't initially start with. And that caused, or I guess it was a good thing, but we had to increase our contingency to 5%. That was one of their requirements. And um, that brought our contingency up to the $1.87 million 
at the bottom of the screen. So when we looked at the, looking at the project and we put the initial bids out, we were looking at the total cost of the project being at $40.64 million, which clearly was over budget. So we had the um, approved amount of $38.55 million, and so we were 2.09 over budget. So we definitely did not want to impact design too much. We wanted to maintain what we had envisioned for the project, but we understood that there were going to be some design changes associated with um, bringing down the budget. We went through a value engineering process, which basically means that you have to look line by line at the um, different items and what they cost to see if we could possibly reduce the cost. We rebid some items to bring that cost down. When we went through the value engineering process, we did look at, um, it was hours and hours of work, and we looked at every single item that we possibly could. There were 88 in total, ranging from $1,100 all the way up to $1.07 million. So we looked at changes, thank you. From flooring material, to the mechanical equipment that is on the top of the buildings, inside the buildings. We looked at our financing costs to make sure that we were really maximizing our financing plan and bringing those costs down as much as we could. Um, we were able to look at some of the higher cost items like site work, for example. So we re rebid our site work because that was one of our highest cost items. Um, but what we didn't want to do was we didn't want to compromise quality um, to any of the materials in the project for the sake of saving money immediately will cost us more money down the road if we put in less you know, quality products. So we made several decisions over the course of those meetings um, and ultimately, with the help of the architects and the engineers, we were able to do that. So with rebidding, so when we had gone out for the site work, for the elevator, and I think it was um, fire mitigation, um, we were able to recoup some savings there, some really good savings. And, um, you know, looking at what we had to really come in at was the $38.55 million. And we were still over budget, even with doing that. So we did the value engineering, we did some rebids, and we were still over budget. But we didn't stop there. We said, well, we certainly can't overspend what we are approved for in referendum. We have to keep at it. And went through a similar process again. And through all of the rebidding, the value engineering, we were able to come in at $370,000 under budget, which was huge. So somebody had mentioned um, that this might be the most cost-effective building project in the state of Connecticut right now for what we're getting. So just to share, because I know it's you know, one thing to talk about numbers, it's another thing to say, okay, what, what do we envision? But I think it's really important for you to see um, some of the um, renditions from the architects so that you know, it kind of brings the project to life. So at the top of the screen, oops, sorry about that. This is um, one view of the new middle school, high school. And this is kind of the extension where the new middle school, high school will be. This is the current gymatorium. And this is the transition part of the building. On the inside, we were really looking to incorporate as many open, flexible spaces as we could for instructional purposes and um, ways that we could really bring cooperative learning into play and really be more conducive to student-centered learning. At the elementary school, we tried to incorporate some fun aspects, because it is elementary school, so using color and some design features like that, we were able to really maximize what we were able to spend given the increased cost of um, abatement and renovation to the elementary school. So just changing some of the you know, the design features of the building to give us a new and refreshed and updated look to our buildings. 
One of the decisions um, that I know a lot of people have been having conversation about is the demolition of the middle school wing portion of the high school. And I want to be clear as to why we made that decision. We felt as a committee unanimously it was a fiscally responsible decision to defer the conversation about what we were going to do with the middle school for a couple of different reasons. First of all, we didn't want to go over budget. And with construction, as you know, there are always things that come up. We went through the budgeting process and we were very conservative and put extra money in places like abatement that we thought you know, may go over and we, we didn't know. So we thought, let's be air on the safe side and put some extra money there. Um, and we also weren't sure where we were going to stand with the space standard waiver. So we got that information actually afterwards. So it's not that we are not planning on doing demolition to that part of the building, but we do have people that are still interested in looking at the space, seeing if we can use it in a more creative, in a, a beneficial way to the town. So we didn't want to just close the door on that. And we also wanted to make sure that we had enough money in our contingency and for the overall project to complete it. But that is a discussion we're going to have, and it is our top priority as a committee. So again, just to recap, because I think this is very important, we had an overall project cost. What we were approved for was the $38.55 million. We did receive these standard waivers of 1.6 million, which goes back to the town. We have the same anticipated reimbursement of 15.06%, so we did maximize our reimbursement from the state on all of the projects. And so that brings or reduces the total cost to the town of North Stonington to $21.89 million. So that's pretty exciting. And that's it. Thank you very much. Testing, testing. Bill. Now that the project presentation is completed, uh, those speakers will need to come forward. John, I understand that you would like to speak first. Well, Lisa Mazella has the timer and she'll time all of the rest of us for those three minutes in the front. Thank you. Quick question, how many of you by show of hands have seen this demonstration for the first time now? Okay, then the reason for the petition is valid. Part of the reason that I filed my petition was because before making a large purchase, I've been taught that it's a very advantageous and prudent thing to do to review the project or the plan, the cost that to me or to whoever is going to receive the bill personally, and then decide whether to proceed. Now, I only have three minutes. There's no way I can convey what I'd like to in that brief period of time. A small portion of that is written in this handout. I hope you pick one up and read it. And so, Part of the reason I also filed that position is because I'm concerned about the financial impact on the residents of the town. You can look around you and see that there's only a small per uh, percentage of us here. There are a lot of people that are concerned about the cost to themselves, the cost to their homes, and in this case, the cost to their heirs, because this is a 20 to 30 year loan, depending on how it's spread out. It's gonna be attached to your property. I've written about that in this, trying to explain the cost impact. We've heard a great deal presented about the cost of the town. I'm sure we're gonna hear more of it this evening. But when they talk about the town, they talk about the financing for the town government, not for you personally. You need to take the time to take your mill rate assessment. It was projected to be a 2.2 mill increase over 30 years, and then multiply that times your property assessment. And then you'll find out what the true cost to you is. Now, we have something that we have pride in here. I've never spoken against this project. I've always spoken against the way it's going to be billed to us. And so if you look at how we are billed, we are billed based on money that we've already spent, the house that we live in, or perhaps someone might have inherited, 
I know someone here in town whose land has been owned since the Charter to the King of England. That person's financial situation may not be able to cover this por their portion of the project if it's attached to the mill rate. We have a constant process here in town where we're billed year after year. It's, we've talked about our grand list and we're told it's the economic engine that drives our future development and our expenses. The grand list is a list of the money you've already spent if your house is paid off. If it's not, you're still paying on it. You're being taxed on something you haven't even finished paying for. And now we have an infrastructure project that's going to impact seniors. It's going to impact people with medical bills. It's going to impact young families that have rising costs or young family situate, uh, new family situations. Is that the end of my time already? All right. I knew I wouldn't have much time to get all these points across, so please read this and consider it because we all have an impact, all of us, on the people based on how we vote. It's up to you to vote, not up to the town to decide for you how it should be paid. This is your finances for the it's next time. 20 to 30 years. Thank you. Lisa, she's got the timer. Yeah. Oh, um, Pam, do you have the, the pointer? Good evening, folks. I am Anthony Palazzolo. Um, congratulations to you all. Thanks to the petitions that we filed with over 200 signatures, you'll be able to voice your opinion on this project, which has substantial questions remaining. Um, and you'll be able to do it in a normal format where everybody has a fair chance to come out and express their view. Even if you happen to be older, you still have value in society. The pro the, turning to the substance here, it's important to understand we gave conditional approval to this project back in 2016. If we didn't get 46% reimbursement from the state, this was supposed to automatically halt. It's no problem for the high school and the elementary school, but in March of last year, we got the uh, grant commitment letter for the Board of Ed roof, and it's problematic because it only came in at 23.06%. Now, as far as I know, uh, well, this letter was addressed to Peter Nero, but it was CC'd to Mike Ergo. As far as I know, and I've tried to find out, nobody else knew about this letter until about December when I, uh, when I asked for it. It clearly shows a 23% reimbursement rate for the whole cost of that, uh, that project, and that's not 46. They're going to pull out a high-powered lawyer here that you pay $500 an hour for, and he's going to tell you 23 is greater than 46. But you can read that letter, and you, you know that it's not. By the way, he not only penned one opinion saying 23 is greater than 46, he penned four of them. You don't need to know anything about the law to know that these opinions are inherently untrustworthy because he had to do four of them. There's the first one. It relied on this letter from the architect. It has a material uh, misrepresentation in it. There's the second one. There's the third one, two days later. Here's the fourth one. Now, and when the um, members of the Board of Finance tried to get a second opinion from a, a second impartial attorney, Dan uh, Spring of that committee wouldn't even entertain the question. That's inherently untrustworthy. Now, they're going to tell you that they've already committed so much money, and so it's, you're going to be shooting yourself in the foot if we move forward, because they all took the extraordinarily irresponsible step of spending your money before you got a chance to vote on this. But there's a thing called sovereign immunity, which says if they didn't have the authority to begin with, these contracts are null and void. You shouldn't be scared. The contractors should be. They tell you all the time, this is a $21 million project, or is it really 23 and a half? There it was. 23 and a half reduced to 21. There it is again, January 16th. We're only paying 21 million when they talk to you in public. The very next day when they talk to themselves, that number goes up to 23 and a half million again. Right there. Now, I think everybody should demand that Mike Ergo put out an updated version of this detailed spreadsheet of the costs on the website that says 21 million. Hey, 
Come on now. Please. In making comments, I ask that individuals not be recognized by name. Thank you. Dan Spring. Chairman of the Board of Finance. You go. You got to go buy two more slides, Dan. Go buy. There, there, there you go. We go. Hello, everybody. Uh, Dan Spring, representing the Board of Finance. What a robust gathering! I'm going to move quickly. Three minutes. It flies by. I'd like to start by those in the audience who have volunteered their time on committees, commissions, or boards. Please raise your hand. Thank you very much. <clears throat> It's an important point and I'm gonna come back to it. Uh, the presentation is really about two words, capacity and will. The capacity side is, can the town financially take on capital projects? Are we have a strong fiscal profile in order to bear taking on debt? It's been one of the big questions. The other is will. The resources of the town are authorized only by the people of the town, the will of the people. This is a quick recap of our fiscal year uh, that closed um, uh, recently, 2016-2017. It's worthy to note that as we concluded that fiscal year, we had no long-term debt. We had increasing reserves. Our reserves right now, which is called the uh, unassigned fund, is at a 14% level, which is 14% of our general fund uh, uh, expenditures uh, on a budgetary basis. I would have to tell you from 2010 to where we are now, we had started with less than 2% in our reserves now at 14%. It's showing good management, good fiscal responsibility, demonstrating the strength of our town fiscally. And we have a growing grand list. Uh, in 2016, we were up 1%. As we closed 2017, we were up another 1%. So that is the engine that drives all the resources of the town. I would hope that we've hit the point of inflection and we're moving up. For our major capital projects, uh, it's important to note, I'm talking about the Emergency Management Center as well as the school project. For both projects, we are taking on indebtedness at a very low interest rate, 2.75%, under 3%. I know most of you may not follow the financial news, but the 10-year Treasury yield right now uh, hit a 2.8. So if you're only going out 10 years, you would hope to see 2.8. We have flexible terms where we can go out as much as 40 years. We're optimizing at 30 years, staying at a 2.75%. Pretty incredible, it's such a sweet spot. And that we have a high reimbursement rate from the state of 46%. Time. I hate to go over, but this is something that you've got to see. Time. These, these are the Please. numbers that households are going to have to pay. Please respect the time. I defer to Doug Gillette, the bond counsel. My name is Doug Gillette. I'm a partner at the law firm of Dave Pitney. We have a long-standing relationship with the town as its bond counsel. As bond counsel, Part of our duties involve guiding the town through the process of authorizing its capital project financing, and then reviewing those proceedings to ensure that they have been fully followed and completed. We have done that. We have advised the town that the proceedings authorizing the project, including the provision in the bond resolution approved in 2016 that set a level of grant commitment for fully eligible project costs has been met. In looking at that one question, 
people need to be aware that under state statute, certain types of projects do not get reimbursed at the 100% grant rate. Among those projects are Board of Ed administrative facilities. They get reimbursed at 50%. The condition in the bond resolution address the reimbursement rate for the fully eligible project costs. If you note know the 23 and change grant reimbursement for the administrative facility is that 50% of the 46.07 fully eligible costs. We reviewed this, we read the grant commitments, uh, we looked at the state statute. We followed up with the first selector with his discussions with the grant section at DAS. And we are com clearly convinced and have advised the town that that, that level of grant funding as set out in the bond resolution has been met. And the project, as approved by the voters, can go forward. Superintendent Nero, Peter Nero. Christine's going to speak, I think. Bill. Chris, Christine's going to speak. Okay, Christine Wagner. Uh, Christine Wagner, Board of Education. I would like to uh, just quickly recognize the uh, board members that are here tonight, if you wouldn't mind standing. Um, just quickly, I'd like to uh, address that we do have some real problems with our structures at our school. Um, we're not making it up. Uh, the safety and PCB issues at the elementary school are real problems. We've had the opportunity to drive by and go inside. Uh, the DEEP and EPA are expecting us to be vacated from that building by next March. And that's a uh, nice of them to give us that much time. Uh, NEASC has us on warning because of our facilities. Our curriculum is good, our scores are amazing, our facilities are lacking. The tunnel is a serious safety issue. Uh, the state of Connecticut, when they even saw that we still had that tunnel, was, uh, I think, pretty appalled by the uh, situation. What we don't have a problem with in this town is our kids. Our kids are ranked in the top 10% in the state, and our high school is in the top five of 116 across Connecticut. We are a school of distinction. Our teachers and our administrators are amazing. They are the best of the best. We should be so proud of this town and our kids. Our families deserve our community support. Thank you. Superintendent Nero, are you planning to speak? I guess not. I, I can't get beeped. I, I need to start yet. I, I, I really. <laughs> I'm really deferring to the board chair. I, I, I've been to I don't know how many meetings since I've been here in the last six years over this building project. And uh, the issue has escalated more since last July 13th when we got contacted from the EPA and said, oh, we can't believe that you guys have not moved that project. And he said, please bear with us. So as you go around the school, you're gonna see fencing where the students cannot walk because there are PCBs in the ground. When you walk into that school, you're going to see three classrooms aborted with signs on them saying no admittance because of PCBs. Now, this is not stuff that we're making up. That's, that's a fact that we have to deal with. So this is very, very important. And the other night, as you heard both our senator and representative say, the chances that we are going to get any additional funding moving forward if this fails would be slim to none in slim left town. That's how compelling it is that we do this. And again, you heard what the board chair, chair said in terms of what our test scores are and where our students rank. 
and that's very important. But the health and safety of our children are also very important. So I will just say, when, before, when, when it was asked, and listen, I know all you folks work, uh, and I know it's difficult to get to night meetings, and we had all of these tri-board meetings, and it's very difficult, so some of you saw it for the first time. But there are some here, people who are against the project tonight, that are talking about the fact that I have to ask the question, maybe they missed one, two, or 30 of the last meetings that we had on this because we've been discussing this for a long time, and I'm glad Bond Council cleared that up regarding the letter. As we always know, that the roof is a guarantee that you will get a project if it's more than 20 years old, and guaranteed you would, pay for, you would get 50% on the reimbursement. We all knew that. That was clearly explained by the architect and everyone who was there. We did not put an auditorium or any facility like that because you get zero reimbursement for that. It's only for what is educational, and that's what we get the reimbursement for at the full rate as well as the space waiver. Thank you for your time. Selectman Ergo. Thank, thank you, uh, Bill. Um, so where do we go next? The rationale for this project has been explained and um, discussed, and really the rationale behind it is we want to modernize the project to realize half of the cost in the state of Connecticut. We want to address the code and hazmat concerns. We, uh, we know that further delays are going to cost us a lot of money, millions. Uh, EPA and NEASC accredit issues, uh, accreditation issues must be dealt with immediately. And this project, as you can see, addresses all those concerns. Uh, we're going to have increased instructional opportunities, uh, positive economic development activity. This can't be understated. People want to invest in communities that invest in themselves. Uh, modernized facilities produce smarter kids and better teachers. I don't have, read the studies. Um, and obviously, energy efficiency is going to save us money in the long run. I need to talk quickly about what happens if this fails. Uh, so the contractor, we've signed the uh, GMP with the contractor, so, and it's USDA has approved it. So what that means is we have had to, as selectmen, act on the resolution that was passed in May of 2016. That was our directive. I can't help that a, a petition came in at an untimely time. We have to continue to do our job as selectmen, as difficult it is. So all contracts are to be awarded tomorrow. Um, now, North Stonington will request an extension with any bidders willing to extend. I am trying to protect the town. So we will ask for extensions, and those that will give them to us, we will take them for beyond uh, the, the date of the referendum to protect us. Best case, all bidders extend another week and our liability is minimized. Worst case, no bidders extend and we award all the bids. Should the project fail, we would then need to negotiate with all bidders and could potentially be liable for $33 plus million, not just the $21 million we're currently planning on spending. Likely case is some bidders that will extend and some will not, and we can negotiate a lesser fee on those who are willing to do so based on the work they've already done or work they have passed on in favor of this project. It's a very difficult situation, difficult timely. As first selectman, I'll do my best to protect the town from this, okay? I just want to go over. These issues don't go away if the project fails. That's my concern. This is the scenario that we looked at, and now we figure that in order to fix, fix these bare minimums, uh, which hazmat, indoor air quality, roof replacement, these are things that have to be fixed. We estimate it to be around $27.9 million. And this is a phased completion. And this does not give us uh, schools that are renovated. I mean, this does not give us schools that are like going to be state-of-the-art brand new schools. This is fixing the bare minimums. So with that being said, I hope you would consider um, all the facts. And honestly, this is the town we live in. And it's OK that this happened. I know nobody wants to hear that. This is, uh, this is, this is the government we have. You know, we're all neighbors. So it's OK. Get the facts, vote the way you feel, don't hold ill will against anybody, let the process play out, and hopefully the right decision will be reached. Thank you. Fine. I will now take hands from the floor. I'm going to select five at a time so that there is not a Mob here, one, two, three, four, five.
Good evening. Um, my name is Mike Lawrence. I live at 30 Meadowood Drive. I've got two kids in the school system right now. Previously, I had um, uh, my son was here, and now my grandchildren are here. Both of my kids are honor students. Uh, they're getting straight A's right now, which has a lot to do with them and less to do with me, but it has an awful lot to do with the folks in this building, the folks in the building here and across the street who are teaching those kids. I like being able to look at my teachers in the eye. I like being able to know who they are. I like to know that they're invested in our community. We have to also invest in our community. Most of us in this room either had kids here, but your responsibility for funding, paying for the other kids to get educated didn't go away when your kids left. We got kids who are here now. Or we got some new folks who just moved into the town and may not have kids yet in the school. But they're going to. And I hear that Stonington's a fine school. I hear that Norwich is a fine school. I hear that, but I don't want my kids every year wondering which is the next school they're going to go to because we decided to shut this one down and we become at the mercy of whatever other education system out there is going to try and balance their budget on our taxpayers' dollars while educating our kids. So I hope you will vote with me and approve this thing so we can get it done, reduce the mess that they're going to live through for the next couple years while they go through dust and, and trucks and all that crap that they're going to have to deal with. But in the end, we still have our kids, we still have our education system, and we still have control of how this thing goes forward. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, Bernard Bing Bardic, 379 uh, Wyasset Road. I'm 73 years old, I'm retired, I'm on a fixed pension, and I have medical expenses. This is a nightmare. This issue was supposed to be settled a year and a half ago. It was, or was it? It is an insult to our students and community to have to go through this again. It has been going on far too long. Here is a facility study in 2006. This all started in 2004. Those are all the studies that we've had for the past 14 years. Much money has been spent, much volunteer time has been given. It is time to build. Our community deserves it. Our students deserve it. To those who say, let's send our students to other towns, the money saved will be negligible or nothing. We will have farmed out our children. We will be taking them from an excellent educational system to where they will never get the individual attention and nurturing that they receive here. Our community will have no say in the overall education programs with another town. Our students will never feel totally accepted or at home. I have talked with students who have been sent to other towns and all of them felt this way. Our students excel in life because of the practical and academic skills and knowledge that they receive in North Stonington. To prove this, go to Wheeler, look at the wall of distinguished alumni. It is absolutely awesome. <laughs> Build it. Do not throw our students away. They are our children, they are our future. Build it. When people look for a place to live, the first thing they look at is the school system. Real estate values that have been going up steadily since the last re referendum will plunge if this referendum does not pass. It is more than a building project. We are talking about the core and soul of our community schools. Build it, build it, build it. Go. Thank you, folks. Thank you. <coughs> Joe Gross. My name is Joe Gross. I live in Hickory Lane. That's on the other side of town. I'm going to ask you to allow me to keep my own time with uh, Mr. Nehru's timepiece. This allows me to speak while the sand is dropping, and I don't hurry up my comments. The first thing I like to do is I like to put a different view in this meeting, 
And I would like to have our children mature into adulthood in a home of their own, a Wheeler. We, as we sit now, we are not a charter town. We function under state statutes, which are sovereign. Yet you cannot get any definitive support from our elected officials up in this state as to the definition of the words uh, on our statutes there. I got to commend my representative, Diana Irvin, for her. She worked for the past two weeks with me up in Hartford doing one hell of a job between all the meetings up there. Uh, if you were into this, you would know what goes on. The state report stated in the beginning when this project started, correct me if I'm wrong, Diane, the state report stated that all items presented on this construction project were proper. And if this was presented to the voters as the same as it was presented to the state, then all was proper in our prior vote. I believe the first petition got us here where we are and provides the same as for the second referendum. I have a petition sitting here that if they did not come out with this here petition for tonight to go to referendum, mine would have been put out. It took seven people to get their signatures. Takes a hell of a lot. I want to give her three words, respect, responsibility, and no. We must respect each other. Respect each other's vote. I voted on this, and you voted on it. Done. Ugh. Responsible, we're responsible. Thank you. I think if you hold it away just slightly, it'll be a bit okay. better. Thank you. Uh, good evening. My name is Cindy Lathrop. I live at 20 Cedar Drive. Um, I am here tonight. I'm missing a UConn women's basketball game to be here. <laughs> That's how important I think this meeting is. Uh, I don't know how many of you have considered tuition. We have already, people have already spoken this. Tuition costs money. You will have no control over it. Bussing your kids. If I was moving into this town now, I don't want my kids bussed. I had two children in this school system who have done exceptionally well. I'm extremely proud of this system, and I'm proud of what my kids got out of it. Um, you, we talk about um, Grand List, no school, no people moving into town, people moving out of town, Grand List down. Um, I want to know what happens after this meeting tonight. I'm not really 100% sure what's going to go on. Uh, and what happens if it fails? I'm really concerned because I don't know what comes next after that. I'm scared. I'm scared. I don't want to live in a town without an identity. I've lived here 47 years, and for 47 years, education has been a toil. We do not have a lot of support for it. Uh, this building issue has been around, and I did go to meetings. I did see these projects ahead of time, and I'm still voting for them, and this whole concept of moving my kids or your kids or anybody's kids out of town, I find particularly terrible. Thank you. Can I have five more hands of folks who would like to speak? One, two, three, four, five. Good evening, thank you for all coming out. So I, ask, I have a question similar to his. So besides school faculty and committee members, how many people have actually been to a school modernization committee meeting? Okay, so, so I will say that that's great. So that means this petition is the same farce that I expected it to be because we meet weekly. The fact that you need a petition to understand what the school project was is ridiculous. If that's why this petition was routed, show up to a meeting weekly. We met weekly. It's advertised on the town meeting. Feel free to join us. That's really all I have to say. Thank you. Hold it away a little bit. That's a little better. Okay. <clears throat> I'm Brian.
Brian Rathbun, 263 Grindstone Hill Road. I've lived here since 1958, and uh, I think we're kind of missing a point. I have no problem with our students. I think they're great. I graduated from this school, too, with honors. I got a good education. I didn't go on to college because I, I felt that I was not going to give or put my mother and father in debt. I read about the students that are graduating, going to college, and they're getting out of college, and they're, all of a sudden they're twenty, thirty thousand dollars in debt. I mean, even the state and the federal government's recognized it. They, they, they waived some of the uh, student loans. The PCBs in the school, the roof leaks. How many years? When my roof leaks, I try to take care of it the next day. I'm not going to sit there with buckets. It should have been done years ago. Not wait, not wait until the whole school needs refurbishing so we buy a new one. There's nothing wrong. I mean, these schools, these schools, as you see, our kids are still being educated even with a leaky roof. Why are we spending all this money? Can we really afford it? We've got senior citizens in this town that lived here for years. I know people that, are, I know people that have been here so many years, and, and they told me, they said, we don't want to split our land. We don't want to have to sell our farmland and build houses. This is part of North Stonington. Get away from the school. Take a ride out in the country. Talk to our farmers, talk to the old timers that have been here for years. I was raised by old timers. They can't get out, but I can, so I'm speaking for them too. I want to remind the audience to be respectful of those who may have a different opinion than you. Sue Pianca, 521A Providence, New London Turnpike. Um, I came from a town even smaller than North Stonington, and um, where I came from, you had to go to a regional school, and that meant busing. Um, it also meant a loss of control over what you're taught. Um, I'm here to say that more does not equal better necessarily. Uh, I read about more options in another school than what we can offer here, but I think quality over quantity beats it any day of the week. Um, I don't think that uh, we'd have control over costs going to another school also, because they can say what they need, well maybe they need to renovate their buildings or maybe they need to do something else and next thing you know, their costs are going up. I think we're much better off with the system that we have here, with the people that we have here, and getting some better buildings. And yeah, um, maybe we should have fixed the roof five years ago, maybe we should have, I mean, everybody had PCBs at one point in time because nobody knew about it. The point is, we gotta do something now. Let's just do it and get it over. We voted for this twice already when we, when we voted at a town meeting that we wanted to keep our schools here in town, overwhelmingly so, and then we voted again for it two years ago, and to have it come up last minute like this is just a little too much to take. Vote yes. First of all, my name is Danny Melchman. I live at 311 Wyasip Road in North Stonington. I'm a newcomer. I've only been here for about a year, and I love the town. I believe, I, my wife ha, plays, you know, Mahjong. The women are allowed to use the bank over here uh, to play. Uh, the schools here, uh, and I don't have any children in school anymore. And I came from Norwich, and I paid over $10,000 a year for taxes. And North Stonington is less here, we, I, we have a nicer home. We have great neighbors. Today I took, 
an hour and drove around Norwich. My heart was in the toilet. It is so terrible, Greenville and, and, and Pathville and, and these towns. We've got everything for our children here. And I hope my grandchildren come back to live in this town, go to school here, and enjoy these beautiful new schools you're going to build. Because if we don't build these schools now, you're never going to have them. And if you want to pay for NFA, it's about, I think it's 12000 or 13000 a year. You've got to bust them. You've got to bust it. It is going to be atrocious. So let's go ahead, build these schools, and give these children a good education for the rest of their lives and their children. Okay, good evening, everyone. My name is George Parent. I live at 37 Stillman Road. My wife and I bought a home there 42 years ago. We raised our two children in this town. Both of them went through the North Stonington uh, school system, graduated, went on to college, graduated. My grandson graduated last year from Wheeler. He's a Dean's List student uh, at the University of Rhode Island. Now, the only concern I have is a, as a former father of children and as a grandfather, we, what parent, what mother or father, what grandmother or grandfather wouldn't do anything for their children? I was educated, somebody paid for it. My kids are all gone now and grandkids, we have to pay for the future children. Now, my, my concern is, is we're using our children to avoid paying taxes. That's not right, ladies and gentlemen. That's not right. We, 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 we got to find another way. So, Mr. Rathbun, you remember David Stillman? You remember Carol Wilkinson? They're my they were my neighbors. Very fine people. First thing that Carol Wilkinson told me when I came here, you're going to love North Stonington because the schools are great. And the other thing I want to tell you is, this is my 50th year of teaching mathematics. So I'm a great supporter of education. Thank you. Before the next speaker, may I have five more hands? One, two, three, four, five. Thank you. Um, my name is Janet Moore, and I live here in North Stonington on Laurelwood Road. Um, I've lived here for 23 years. Sorry, is that better? <laughs> First of all, I want to take a moment to thank everyone who worked so hard on this school project and continue to work hard on keeping our costs down. I am so sorry that we have to go through all of this over again. I never thought this would be possible. I hope that all who see strength and good things for our town do not become discouraged. I have to do this, we all have to do this again because it is required by the law due to a petition. I hope I will be able to open some eyes by what I have to say. By the way, I'm happy that our leadership is taking a positive stance. I come from a small town nearby. The mill rate there now is 31.5 mills. They are at the mercy of surrounding towns who set a rate per child for their high school education. The town has to provide busing and additional transportation provided by the parents over long distances for their children to participate in sports or any other extracurricular activities. The youth grow up there not knowing other youth. 
The town is divided. The people they live, that live there mostly are renting. There is no future there. And the mill rate is 31.5 mills. There's nothing there. We moved here 23 plus years ago. I have four children, by the way, because of the schools here in town. Okay. I just believe that our school is an investment. Let's be smart about this. I want to take 15 seconds to give you a brief commercial. <laughs> the turnout tonight is wonderful. Will everyone please consider coming to every town meeting? Hi, I'm Laura Tillinghast. Uh, I live at 225 Denison Hill Road. I'm a 1990 Wheeler graduate. Um, I wanted to take a moment to tell you about my amazing National Honor Society achieving college course in high school taking, uh, club leading, volunteering, part-time job holding, uh, who has been accepted already to four colleges daughter, who will be graduating this year, the class of 2018, with some amazing friends who are actually in this room. Um, she will graduate with probably three of the best friends she will ever have in her life. Um, and though she probably doesn't see eye to eye with Cody and Chris all the time, um, they will always have a friendship that lasts. She, I don't think, would have had half the opportunities she has had at Wheeler. Um, she will graduate with a lot, a lot of college credits. Um, it's amazing. Uh, she has been upheld, pushed forward, I don't want to say coddled, because she hasn't, but like just held to a higher standard. It's been an amazing experience for her, and I hope all of the kids here get to have it too. We have 20 minutes left before the call of the question. Vilma Gregoropoulos, Wormwood Hill Road. That was my old address, <laughs> sorry. Why as of Lake Road? Um, Clearly, the school's falling apart. To fix it is gonna cost more than to build a new one, so that's like a no-brainer. However, there are also a lot of people in this town who are hurting financially. And these two things are like comparing apples and oranges. I know Brian and John very well. They're good guys, and they're, they need to stay in this town. We need people like them in this town. So we have to change the way we tax people so that we don't do this all the time. We have a tax system that's based on feudalism. Uh, the people who owned land were the ones who were in power and voted, and therefore they, the, the tax system is based that way. It has nothing to do with your ability to pay. I have $500,000 worth of real estate. It has, I make no money off of it, and it doesn't have anything to do with my income or my ability to pay my taxes. So let's build the school, but then let's also take care of not just our kids, but all the people who live in this town and think about how we pay taxes and find a more equitable way so that we never have to do this again. Hello, my name is Nate Kermsey. I live on Winnichock Hill Road. I think we need to be honest about the referendum next week. If it doesn't pass, we're going to lose the schools in this town. I think that's an absolute fact. We're going to lose them because the money that we're get, we've got right now will never come back. The state money is gone. We'll never see state money in any of our lifetimes again. It's important to remember when we think about the state money that it's our money. We pay taxes. This is our own money. Right now, the state's also building schools in Groton, in Stonington, in Norwich, in Preston, everywhere but here. We're paying for everybody else's schools except our own. Let's think about that when we vote next week. Let's also remember. 
With all due respect to the people who put together this packet of information about the costs of this project, well, yeah, it's true, it's gonna cost us money. That's, that's a fact. Not as much as fixing the schools, but certainly some money. What I don't think they paid ad adequate attention to was the cost of not going forward. There's first of all the reduced property values. Nobody who has a house wants to lose equity in it. But the real fact is that when you're a parent, you don't buy a house in a town that doesn't have schools in it. You don't. So let's say we send our kids to Stonington. That's the best selection. Of course, if, if we don't go to Stonington, they'll go to Norwich or Griswold or something with all those opportunities I keep hearing people telling me about. My kids have never been in a street gang. <laughs> but our kids will be hostages in those towns. They'll basically be able to extort any amount of money out of us for tuition that they want because our schools aren't coming back, ever. Thank you. Hi, I'm, I'm Jim Patton, 11 Babcock Road. And just one philosophical comment first. If you think education is expensive, try ignorance. <laughs> now, George Parent would be happy that I kind of mentally integrated under the curve of what was clapped for and what wasn't. And my conclusion is overwhelmingly this room is in support of the schools. However, all the clapping in the world doesn't count if you don't vote. So you got to get out and vote. I'm going to be out of town when the vote occurs, but Mike Ergo told me 8 o'clock tomorrow morning I can pick up an absentee ballot, and that's what I'm going to do. <laughs> 9 o'clock. By, we'll By the afternoon. Okay, thanks, Mike. We have 15 minutes left before the speaker. Can I have five more hands up there? One, two, three, four, five. Thank you. Thank you. My name's Russ Stewart. I live on Billings Lake Road. Um, i did been here 40 years. I did not move here because of the education system. But certainly the schools are a big reason that I am staying here. My 11-year-old son is also Russ Stewart, is here at uh, North Stonington Elementary. I am a teacher also, also a math teacher at Fitch High School. Um, what this school system has done is amazing. It's amazing. I, the numbers they did in the state, when I first saw them, I thought, well, that must be, that must be in southeastern Connecticut for small schools or something. I went on to the internet. What they have done is amazing. It only happens with superior teachers, superior administration, superior backing. But as a teacher, I will tell you that there is nothing more important than the parents. And I, every teacher on the planet will tell you that. What the day I knew how special this place was, and I'm just going to tell one little story. I came on math day. It was a Wednesday afternoon, or not afternoon, it was 11 o'clock. I expected, I got permission to leave, it was hard fought, but as a math teacher I thought I should be there. I expected I would be there with probably a single mom who had showed up. Instead, with 22 kids or 20 kids, there were just as many parents. And then I knew, we have something special. That's before we ever got these things back, I knew we had something special. That's not going to happen anywhere else. Thank you. Uh, I'm Laura Mazzella, 24-7 for Sadika Road, and I'm in seventh grade in middle school, at this school, <laughs> and, um, <laughs> and I haven't met everyone in my school, like, at all. I haven't met everyone, but every single kid that I have ever met has supported the building project, and I think that it's really important that we need to know this. Like, every single kid that I have ever met has supported this, and I think, it, and I will not 
be bused to some other school where I, and because I have never gotten the same best education that I could ever imagine. I couldn't imagine any other like education plan, like any, all the teachers are like, they know if, um, like they have a personal connection with every student they, that they teach. Like they know people, um, they know their kids even when they're adults, they'll recognize them. I have not imagined any school that could do a better job. So I will not be shipped and bused to some other school and I will not stand for no building project. Hi, Darren Robert. Um, thank you, Pam, for giving that nice presentation. Uh, I remember giving a presentation like that in 2004 with our first building project request from the town. There were six people in the room. It's a little different now. Thank you very much for coming out. <laughs> a little bit more. Um, also, when I was uh, at Wheeler High School uh, in the spring of my senior year, I quit school. I was pretty stupid then. I didn't know what I had. When we finished college in 99, we knew we were coming back here. I can't imagine living anywhere else except Joseph Van Dyke, but I can't afford it. So <laughs> I'll be here. But I want you to know that all the information that you folks have paid for for the past 18 years is available. All the facts are out there. Everything the state made us do from finding out how many kids were going to be in this school for the next 20 years to finding out what a PCB was, to what a grub is. It's all been paid for by you folks and it's available. So please read the facts instead of what other people are giving you. Um, last thing to say is, on the way here tonight, I was talking to my friend Luke and he said that most people are good. So be good and build it. Uh, my name is Tim Yakaitis. Uh, we're, we're newcomers here. We've only been in town for 18 years. Um, we live on Sleepy Hollow Road. And I don't know about you, but does this feel like a broken record? We did this. We did this. These guys are talking like this is some kind of information that we've never seen before. And they're, they're helping us out and enlightening us by sharing all this information. We did this. We voted on this. It was close. I get it. I, I sympathize with the people who, who don't want this and are going to have to pay for it anyway. I completely get that. But the fact is, we did this. We already voted on this. This, is, this should be done. And to have these petitions come out in the 11th hour, uh, they're, they're not trying to bring us new information. They're just trying to stop it, is what's happening. So I, the way I figure it, I probably got 30 seconds left. Probably nobody here is changing anybody's mind. So I'm going to take my last 30 seconds to have you. They've been saying, don't interrupt. I actually want whoever's interested in joining me in a build it, build it, build it, build it, build it, build it. Thank you, folks. Thank you, folks. We have nine minutes, nine minutes left. Thank you, sir. Hi, I'm Mike Anderson, uh, 83 Cedars Road, new address. Thanks, Sean Murphy. Um, how many honor roll kids we got over there? <laughs> Who wants to give them a new high school? Uh, I've been on the uh, ad hoc committee uh, since the beginning, building committee, after we did vote, and we voted yes, and there was kind of, a, it was a mandate, shall we do something? We voted yes. Three votes, but we voted yes. All conditions have been satisfied by the bond council, says we got the percentage, we move forward. So as far as I'm concerned, my vote yes mattered everyone else here the vote yes mattered and mr ergo please sign those contracts 
Let's move forward. Let's build it. Build it. May I have the last five people who would like one, two, three, four, five. My name is Chris Anderson. I've been here for 21, or my wife and I have been here for 21 years. I moved all the way from Voluntown, all right? Voluntown is a very small town. It's smaller than this town. I'm not going to give you sob stories about taking a van for 30 minutes to a bus for 30 minutes to get to high school, but that's what we had to do. We had a very close-knit community school in Voluntown, K through 8, and then they shipped us to NFA. Great school. Not for me, but great school. But I moved here for a reason, and I convinced my wife to move here for a reason, because I wanted my kids to go live in a community where they could go to school, kindergarten through 12th grade. They could have a sense of community. They could come back here and feel that sense of community. Because I, I work in Norwich, but that's I work and I come home. I work and I come home. I don't stay there for any reason. But that's... <laughs> listen, it's simple math, people. It's simple math. We've been doing this for 12... Darren, I was at that meeting in 2004, all right? It's simple math. It's going to cost us $21 million to make this project happen. It will cost a ton more if we don't make it happen. Look at the numbers. It's simple math. Quick story. We had a tough budget season last year. I went line by line through the education budget. Some may have heard this before, but a lot of you haven't. There were two costs, two costs that were above 5%. It was a zero increase budget. There were two costs that were above 5%. One, insurance at 14%. Who, who can control insurance? Anybody in here? No. The highest thing, 30% increase on sending our kids to other schools. 30% increase. That will be across the board if we close our schools down. Hi, my... My name is Mike Osborne. I moved here 10 years ago with my beautiful wife and three kids and live at 6 Old Colony Road. We love this town. We have a place in our heart for everyone that lives here. Uh, we empathize to anybody that's struggling and has a hard time. And as a community, we all need to help each other. But there's been a call to order for 15 years to take care of renovation and toxins in our schools. We are extremely fortunate to have business leaders, construction leaders, education leaders, to spend their personal time and volunteer to put together an amazingly well-planned project to have controlled taxes over a 20-year period, to put us in a good comfort zone, to be solid, to be a reputable community. I've been listening very carefully to try to understand the people that are petitioning, because they have a voice. They have something that they want to say. There's two things that I've heard. One is, we didn't get what we asked for in the vote. No, we got more. What they did over the last two years gave us more than what we asked for and what we voted on. Number two, they don't want to see taxes go up. I'm sorry, but no one in this room is going to stop inflation. Let's control our taxes. Let's not go by the luck of the draw. I haven't seen any other projects put forward to say, what are we going to do to make this a strong town, give our kids a good education, and control taxes? These people have. Thank you. Call for orders to you. Go out there and vote. Oh, no, it's my turn. All righty. So I'm Matthew Mendolia from 34 Old Colony Road. Most of you guys know who I am, um, particularly the students, coincidentally, the younger ones. Um, looking back at my experience, back from kindergarten, how long have I been here? Um, I've always wanted to personally thank each and every faculty member at the schools, whether that's elementary school, middle or high school, not only the teachers, we have amazing faculty all around us, and each and every member has helped uh, me create, uh, just help with my academic life overall. Um, 
And looking back at the school of town in general, um, I want this town to be remembered. I want, when we get older, and, and when we have kids or whoever, you tell your friends, oh my goodness, when I used to live in this wonderful small town, North Stonington, our community loved us, our family cared, the schools cared, we had one of the best educational systems. Um, and so, uh, as a senior, I was accepted into Eastern uh, State for teaching. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Um, and so, what I want to do is actually become a teacher for the people who've inspired me. I want to then inspire the younger generations that we'll have. And so, when I come back here after graduation, I want to come back to the school that taught me. I want to become the best Wheeler teacher elementary school here. <laughs> So if, <laughs> thank you, thank you. So if the school, so I want to be, you know, I want to come back and go, I remember, I remember being here when the old school was here. I want to be welcomed into this new school and just see how far we've come even in the last 20, you know, 20 years or so. I just want this town to be remembered and having this school will put us back on the map. I guarantee it, <laughs> guarantee it. So I think, obviously, the whole reason why we're here is because of the educational system. I think we should all get, you know, standing ovations for all the teachers and support and everyone on the board. A big thank you for everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, folks. We have three more folks that want to speak. Hello, I'm Henry Smith, a graduate of the class of 2016. I would ask that for a moment you ignore my uniform and see me as a member of this town and a graduate of this school. I am proud to represent North Stonington at the United States Coast Guard Academy. And I know that all the other graduates from, from Wheeler at other academies are also proud to represent this town. Now, what I have to say about this, if this school, if this school building project doesn't get passed, what this town is doing is ransoming its future. Where is this town going to be without the community that this school builds up? Please, build this school so that we can continue to send, be proud of our graduates and be proud of all the, have graduates be proud of their school and all five of our armed services. Thank you. Hello, I'm Dana Mendolia, Old Colony Road. Um, I think it's a, kind of funny that tomorrow's Groundhog Day. That's exactly what this feels like. <laughs> um, I just want to remind everyone, and I probably don't need to, but a few years ago when we started one of these Groundhog Day projects and votes, Stonington didn't want anything to do with us. Let's remember that. They didn't have room for our children. And so we voted to keep this school open. There's a reason for that. And they grew this really nice school, and now they don't have the children to fill it. So now they're coming back knocking at our door. I really think it's time that we just keep our kids in our own community. Thank you. Hi, uh, I think I might be the last one speaking, so you obviously did not save the best for last. Um, I'm Asa Palmer. I, uh, I used to be the next first selectman of the town, but Mike beat me to it. Um, you know what, I think that there's a lot of tension in town and there's no way it would have happened had these petitions not been formed, but there's also no way that all these people would be holding up these signs that say build it. They'd just be breaking ground in a few days and nobody would be saying anything about it. And so I think that the system we have and the petitioners doing what they did really enriched the system and it made it so more people got involved and it made it better and it made it so that we were gonna have a town meeting. And then more petitioners came and made it so there's gonna be a real vote. And I think that it's gonna be a good thing in the long run because I'd bet the farm that their town's probably gonna vote yes and then that way at least there won't be 905 people pissed off that they didn't get what they wanted 
and 908 people cheering. It's going to be, you won twice, and I think it'll be a more def defined victory. Um, I think we should all just take a little bit of Brian Rathman's advice and make sure that we maintain this one so that this one lasts a hundred years, and we don't have to build a new one in 25 years, 30 years. Thank you. I'm going to take the liberty for another commercial. Uh, early in June, there's a bipartisan effort at Hewitt Farm to have a community event for the purpose of getting folks to come, enjoy the day, eat, and sign a pledge that you will vote regularly in elections. It is 8.34 by my watch. I lied. We didn't stop at 8.30. I wish to uh, have a motion and a second to move the question to a referendum. Nick Mullane. Because you're being tardy by four minutes, you get 15 detentions. <laughs> My name's Nick Mullane, I live at Miller Road. I resolve that in accordance with the petition received pursuant to the Connecticut General Statutes, section 7-7, -7, this meeting be adjourned to referendum vote on the resolution presented to this meeting. It will be held on Thursday, February 8th, 2018, between the hours of 6 a.m. and 8 p.m. at the New Town Hall Conference Room, 40 Main Street, North Stonington. Is there a second? Second. 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 All in favor, raise your hand, please. All opposed. We will therefore adjourn this meeting to next Thursday's vote from 6 a.m. to 8 p.m. at the town hall. Thank you. Thank you. Don't forget the vote.